Hello everyone, today we are doing a book called Charlotte's Web. And today, hold on, can you hear me? Hopefully. I'm going to start, this will be a full thing, hopefully, if the free thing lets me. So let's start. Chapter 1, Before Breakfast. Where is Papa going with that axe? said Fern to her mother as they were setting the table for breakfast. Out to the hog house, replied Miss Arable. Some pigs were born last night. Last night. I don't see why he needs an axe, continued Fern, who was only eight. Well, her mother said, one of the pigs is a runt. It's very small and weak and it will never amount to anything. So your father has decided to do away with it. Do away with it? shrieked Fern. You mean kill it? Just because it's smaller than the others? Miss Arable put the pitcher of cream on the table. Don't yell, Fern, she said. Your father is right. The pig would die anyway. I love... I love... <laughs> Continue to the book. <laughs> Fern pushed the, pushed the chair out of the way and ran outdoors. The grass was wet. And the earth smelled of fr- it smelled of for springtime. Fern's sneakers were slopping, was sopping. By the time she caught up with her father, please don't kill it. She sobbed. It's unfair. And Mister Arable stopped walking. Fern, he said gently, "You will have to learn to control yourself." Control myself? Yelled Fern. This is a matter of life and life and death, and you, of life and death, and you talk about controlling myself. Tears ran down her cheeks as she took hold of the axe and tried to pull it out of her father's hand. Fern, Mr. Arable, said Mr. Arable, I know more about raising a litter of pigs than you do. A weakling makes trouble. Now run along. But it's unfair, cried Fern. The pig couldn't help being born small, could it? If I had been very small at birth, would you kill me? Thing I'm doing for this. I'm Mr. Arable smiled. Certainly not, he said, looking down at his daughter with love. But this is different. A little girl is one thing, a little runty pig is another. I see no difference, replied Bird, still hanging on to the axe. This is the most terrible case of injustice I ever heard. A queer look came over John Abel's Arable's face. He seemed almost about to cry himself. All right, he said. You go back to the house, and I will bring the runt when I come in. I'll let you start it on a bottle like a baby. Then you'll see what trouble a pig can be. When Mr. Arable returned to the house a half hour late, ha- house half an hour later, he carried a carton under his arm. Fern was upstairs changing her sneakers. The kitchen table was set for breakfast, and the room smelled of coffee, bacon, damp, damp, plaster, and woods, and wood smoke from the stove. Put it on her chair, said Miss Arable. Mr. Arable set the carton down at Fern's place. When he, then he walked to the sink, washed his hands, and dried them on a roller towel. Fern came slowly downstairs. Her eyes were red from crying as she approached her chair. The carton wobbled and there was and there was a scratching noise. Fern looked at her father. Then she lifted the lid carton. There inside, looking up at her, was a newborn pig. It was a white one. The morning light shone through its ears, turning them pink. He's yours, Mr. A- said Mr. Arable, saved from an untimely death and made the Good Lord, forgive me for this foolishness. Fern could take her, couldn't take her eyes off the tiny pig. Oh, she whispered. Oh, look at him! He's absolutely perfect. She closed the carton carefully. First, she kissed her father. Then she kissed her mother. Then she opened the lid again, lifted the pig out, and held it against her cheek. At this moment, her brother Avery came into the room. Avery was ten. He was heavily armed. An air rifle in one hand and a wooden dagger in the other? What's that? he demanded. What's Fern got? She's got a guest for breakfast, said Miss Avery. Airball. Wash your hands and face, Avery. 
Let's see it, said Avery, setting his gun down. You call that miserable thing a pig? That's a fine specimen of a pig. It's no bigger than a white rat. Wash up and eat your breakfast, Avery, said his mother. The school bus will be along will be along in half an hour. Can I get a pig too, Pop? asked Avery. No, I only distribute pigs to the early risers, said Mr. Abel. Fern got up at daylight trying to rid the world of injustice. As a result, she now has a pig. A small one, to be sure, but nevertheless a pig. It just shows that what can happen if a person gets out of bed prop promptly. Let's eat. Promptly. Let's eat. But Fern couldn't eat until her pig had a had her pig had had a drink of milk. Miss Arable found a baby's nursing bottle and the rubber nipple. She poured warm milk into the bottle, fitted the nipple op over the top, and handed it to Fern. Give him his breakfast, she said. A minute later, Fern was settled, was seated on the floor in the corner of the kitchen with her infant between her knees, teaching it to suck from the bottle. The pig along... But although tiny, had a good appetite and caught on quickly. The school bus honked from the road. Run, commanded Miss Abel, taking the pig from Fern and slipping a donut into her hand. Avery grabbed his gun and another donut. Avery grabbed his gun and another donut. The children ran out to the road and climbed onto the bus. Fern took no note. No. <laughs> Breathe. No notice of the others in the bus. Isn't it supposed to be on the bus? I'm not sure. She just sat and stared out the out of the window, thinking about thinking what a blissful world it was and how lucky she was to have an entire charge of a pig. By the time the bus reached school, Fern had named her pet, selecting the most beautiful name she could think of. Its name is Wilbur. She her name is Wilbur. <coughs> Not on earth, I am. Its name is. Why do I sound like? Its name is Wilbur. She whispered to herself. She was still thinking about the pig. The pig. When the teacher said, "Fern, what's the capital of Pennsylvania?" Wilbur she replied, "Fern." Dreamily, the pupils giggled. G <coughs> giggled. Fern blushed. That is the first chapter of Charlotte's Web, and we are done.